So let me tell you a story about how a moth ate my brand new Italian Brooks Brothers Merino wool sweater and what I've learned about life through it. So I go to Brooks Brothers and I buy, you guys ever felt the Italian Merino wool? It's nice, man. I mean, I wish I could just have sheets, long sheets of merino wool. I could sleep on it, you know? It's just, you know, feels, I mean, I go sometimes, okay, we're, we're family here, so I'm, I'm gonna share with you. Sometimes I just go in the closet and I just wear it. <laughs> and I have nowhere to go. It's like, ah, oh, this feels nice, you know? I know you think I'm strange. But, so I try this sweater on, you know, it's, and it, this, car, this color was orange, and it was beautiful. And I put it on and it looked like this, right? Uh, well, where's the hole? It's supposed to be in the middle. But uh, it had this gashing hole in the middle right here. <laughs> and no matter how I tried to salvage it, um, it was ruined. And I think in, the, in, in a very similar way, in the same way, I think for a lot of us, we have a big hole in our view about stuff. See, for a lot of us, we know in our mind that stuff is supposed to depreciate. And someone might say, no, I heard that real estate doesn't depreciate. Well, that person was wrong. Wall Street was wrong. And someone might say, well, if you invest smart in real estate, you won't lose any money. Well, I don't know. I think they're not gonna use smart an investment in the same sentence for another a decade or so until some idiot uh, finds another bubble like housing, tech, and then commodities like oil because he wants more stuff than you and me, where that's going to cause everybody else to lose their stuff, like what happened currently. All right? I mean, so you think about what stuff is, and you can never win with stuff. Just ask Lehman Brothers. I think um, they don't have any stuff left. Well, except New York Times article just recently released, Lehman Brothers art collection is on for sale. But who wants that stuff in a recession, right? But okay, anyway, that's like a little tangent I went on. But let's go back to my story about the moth. So the sweater is ruined. So you know what? I get courageous. I go to the mall and I buy a new one. You know, I buy a new one, but then just the next day, I bought a different color, and then I get a fat stain on it. Don't you hate when that happens? And it's ruined. Or, so my I ruin it, or time ruins it. Why? Because you might buy something, and then it goes out of fashion. Project Runway and Vogue thinks you're a moron walking in the city. I hate when that happens too. Or, you, you, you know, you just can't ever beat stuff. Can't ever win with stuff. Why is that? Because it always depreciates. Now, you know, the Bible talks a lot about stuff and our view of it. You know, it's ironic because New Yorkers we're the most cynical people in the world. But we, it's ironically, we have one naive thing we believe about stuff. We believe, to the advertiser's dreams, we believe that stuff, such and such product or thing, will give us a perfect life. This one thing, we're, we're cynical about everything, politics, God, church, but when it comes to the dream of a perfect life, we're naive about it. And that's why sex sells products. You ever think about it? When you have a beautiful woman, say beautiful woman. Okay, guys, you don't need to be shy. You look at it when, when they advertise it, don't be shy. So you see a beautiful woman, and most of the times, a half-naked beautiful woman. And, let me, and before you say anything, both men and women appeal to half-naked, beautiful women. Why is that? Well, because the advertisers are selling us something about life. First, the women, it appeals to women because you want to be wanted like her. 
And for the men, you want to be man enough for her. So if you buy this product, I don't know what a beautiful woman has to do with a car, and you're like, I do. <laughs> you will get the missing link in your life. You're going to get the next step to the perfect life. Yeah? You're going to get a perfect life. See, here's the problem. And here's what the commonality of, think about this. What does a beautiful woman, a happy ending, and a perfect life all have in common? What are the media agencies selling us? They're smart too. What are they selling us? They're selling us. It's very similar to the garden of what? Eden. Perfect bodies, a perfect life, a happy ending. Garden of Eden. They're selling us heaven. They're selling us that you can have a perfect life here if you get this product. It's ridiculous, right? But don't tell me you don't want stuff. Tell me you didn't buy new stuff in the last month. You're like, okay, I'm a sucker. It's a sucker born every woman. That's why it cost a million dollars to advertise in the Super Bowl. Well, maybe more now because of inflation. I mean, th so think about it. So they're selling us heaven. They're selling us something that we think we want because eternity, Eden, heaven, is a desire written in our heart. And you know what? We'll keep trying product after product to go break back into Eden, even if we're going to try one apple at a time. Just be like, oh, I thought this would be it. Again and again perpetually. You see, let me get, listen to me. This is the point of what we call stuffitis, or more commonly known as materialism, okay? Stuffitis is not the stuff you want, it's the puff in the stuff. You know what puff is? Say puff. Puff, puff. you know, magic. It's the magic in the stuff. It's the promise of the stuff that we can't shake. It's not the product, it's the puff in the stuff, the promise of what the product promises us that we can't shake off. And this is precisely where the gospel story comes in and seeks to redeem in us, through us, and in the world. Let me tell you something very clearly. You can never get heaven. You can never have a perfect life here on earth. You're like, shit, that sucks. <laughs> I want to help you come down from cloud nine and embrace the fact that that is a delusion, but it's a delusion and an illusion you cannot shake off. Why? Because you want it because eternity is in your heart. You were meant to live longer than this life. Whether you are an atheist or an agnostic or a Buddhist or what the hell ever you are, world you come from, you, in your heart, you know you're meant to live longer than this life. That's why you want that. That's why you desire it if you don't even want it. Even if you resign from life, you want it. And this is where the gospel comes in. And this is what Jesus says. Jesus says in Matthew 6, he makes it very clear where your heart is, this is where your treasure will be also. What does he mean? He means you have to learn how to view, get the right perspective about stuff. The gospel seeks to do something that, I don't know, in the last 4,000 years of a booming economy, some dips in here and there, of how you can, you can transcend materialism, how we, the gospel, can transcend what we call stuffitis, how we can get the puff out of the stuff and be free and get something much greater in this life. Amen? So let's turn to our, our passage here. Matthew 6, and Mark read it for us. And what we're going to tackle today is real simple. What we're going to tackle is how the gospel transcends the puff and the stuff. How the gospel transcends this lure and promise of materialism. And how we can be set free from it. Because if we don't, like a stupid hamster on a treadmill, the great tragic story of humanity, where we're going to run our whole life aimlessly trying to get something that we can never get and be disappointed over and over again. The gospel sets us free from that. So, question is this, okay? 
Jesus says in Matthew 6, three things that wouldn't make sense unless they really all had a common theme, right? So Jesus says, do not what? Store up your treasures um, on the earth where what? I talked about that, right? Moth, that was the inspiration. <laughs> Moth, rust, and what? Thieves. I remember one of my friends in, in the early 90s, he went, in the, he went to the Bronx for a second, and he lost his uh, air pumps. Some, I won't tell you the color of the people that stole it from him, but they stole his pumps. Okay? Now, so what does rust, dust, and thieves all have in common? Real simple. Every single thing, right, goes bad. Every single thing, all those things get ruined. Those things cause things to get ruined. What is Jesus saying? Jesus saying, what Jesus is saying is do not store up treasures. Treasures simply defined is something that you value most. It's something that you're going to chase after because it's valuable in your mind and heart. So what he's saying simply is what then? He's saying don't chase after stuff that will get what? Ruined or let you down. Because he's saying stuff will always let you down. For example, I took my staff to Circuit City before they went bankrupt because they were having an amazing sale. And I got into the party of Plasma TVs a little late, you know, two years ago or 1.5 years ago. So I took my staff with me to justify this type of staphitis because I'm a pastor, you know, and we pastors don't struggle with that. So when I go to Circuit City and I, and I asked one of my staff members, I said, hey, Andrew, 42. Or 48. He's like, oh, you know, for your living room, 42. 42 will be fine. But you see, I had a problem with that. <laughs> I looked at the TV and I said, I don't know why, but I think the 48 looks better than the 42. And, and I was like, Andrew, and then I said, you know, in, in, uh, in pretentiously, I, Andrew, you're right. I think the 42 would be right, like a holy type of way. Yeah. God would have me buy the 42 inch. But the problem was, they told me that when we left Circuit City with the 48 inch TV, that they knew, obviously, I wanted the 48. And I said, how would you know that? Well, you asked all of us. When Andrew gave you the wrong answer, the answer that you did not want to hear, you came to the other person. And you asked me, hey, you think uh, 42 is sufficient for my house? And I think I asked at least 12 times. But here's, here's where the story continues. But at, so I get the 48 and I'm happy. Watching ESPN, watching basketball, watching LeBron dunk on Kobe. You know, just awesome, fun stuff. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know what? But after a week, I go to Lydia and I said, Lydia, come here for a second. To, come here to the living room. He's like, what is it? I'm busy. I'm like, just come here for a second. Come here for a second. I have a very important thing to discuss with you. Come here, come here. But what is it? Do you think the TV looks a little small? <laughs> Honey, I think I should sell this TV on eBay or Amazon. And I think we need a 61 inch. And the story continues. I look at my house five years ago. When I first went into my house, I'm like, oh God, this is so great. I have so many rooms, so many rooms. I have a deck, I have a dog. I have, you know, I could grill in the deck any time. This is awesome. After two years later, I want, I'm watching TV in the, you know, and then I see, you know, a house with a pool in the back and a gate and a bigger yard. And I'm like, I don't like my house anymore. I want that. Because if I had that, if I just had that, I, I would have a perfect life and I wouldn't want anything anymore. That's why my son sometimes, 
My son says, when he's sick of something, I don't want this anymore. I need something else. The truth is, this story never ends. It's a perpetual cycle of wanting something that can never satisfy you because it can never, it never can. The puff in the stuff is a promise that will always let you down. Everything that you have on this earth, everything that you think will make you have the perfect ending, the perfect life will let you down because they don't last. You're gonna want something bigger. You're gonna want, some, you're gonna want something hotter. I'm gonna talk about that next week though. You're gonna want something newer. Why? Because you're looking for heaven. You're looking for a way to go back to God. You're looking for a way to go back into Eden, and you can't. So you try endless amount of apples. The Mac is the closest thing we got to heaven. But it will, it will get ruined. Mac's battery life sucks. It will shut off on you even though everything in it runs perfectly. After three seconds, after three years, everything, Jesus says, gets ruined. Why then, Jesus says, why would you invest your whole life chasing after that? Jesus says, don't you think that's dumb? That's a bad investment? Well, you know, I mean, we're all about bad investments for the last couple of years. We're all about losing stuff. Jesus says, get the right perspective on stuff. So how does the gospel here at Jesus help us transcend the puff and the stuff? How does Jesus help us transcend our need and our addiction to materialism and stuff like this? First lesson we learn from this passage is simple. What's that? What? You got to see what? You got to see what stuff isn't. You got to get the right perspective of what stuff is. Stuff is not a perfect life. Stuff is not heaven. It's not Eden. It can never be. Stuff is just a point of reference. Newer stuff, better stuff, hotter stuff, cooler stuff. Ooh, so exhausting. It's just a point of reference to a need we have inside of us that only God can satisfy because the story begins with him and the story ends with him. See, once you, you, you can never imagine, man, let me just tell you something. I'm going to free you. I'm going to change your life today. I do that every week, but I'm going to do that more today. <laughs> let me tell you something. If you today will embrace the fact that you will never be, you will never have a perfect life, you will have a much better life. A full life. Because you won't have these crazy expectation on a vacuum cleaner making you happy. You're not going to have these crazy expectations of what you can never get in your life. And it will open you up to an alternative. And then some people here be like, okay, so what is the point of this? Here's the point. The point is, the question really is of the passage, is what in your life today? What such and such thing or product, and don't bullshit me, okay? I'm good at calling it. What such and such product, no matter how stupid it might be in your mind and in your heart, do you think if you get, you won't need anything anymore? What will give you the perfect ending? What will give you the happy ending and the perfect life? What is that? I pray that the Spirit of God today in small groups, and in this room, would begin to show you, as we reflect this week, what those things are. Because those things are actually, Jesus says, ruining your life. Ruining why you're here on earth. Because you're dumb. You're stupid. Why would you go after things that's going to always let you down and ruin, be ruined? No matter how hard you try. Even if you get a perfect sweater, a merino sweater from Brooks Brothers, a moth will freaking eat it. Or you, or you, because you're stupid, you'll stain it. Or it'll go out of fashion. Life sucks. And you know what? God made it that way. Because if it didn't, if everything was perfect, then you would never go back to the person that created the story, first of all. 
that's the story we find ourselves in. So when, some people in here are like cynical now. They're just like, shit, that came to the wrong sermon. <laughs> so Pastor Sam, what you're telling me is I can never be, I can never have a perfect life. You just ruined my life, first of all. Second of all, you're telling me I will never have the climax, the orgasmic type of life I've been always looking for. The perfect ending. I'm not going to get all the answers to the questions I have in my life. I'm never going to be fully happy. And I'm never, ever going to have heaven on earth. Yeah. You're like, this sucks. And you're like, Pastor, I know what you're going to say next. I know what you're going to say. I heard it a million times. And I don't want to hear it. You're going to tell me that, yeah, I can't love stuff, but I do. You're going to tell me that Jesus, when I die in heaven, is going to give me all the stuff I want, right? You're going to tell me that Jesus is the way to heaven. That not now, but when I die and I go to heaven, I'm going to get all the stuff that makes me happy, makes my life sense. You're going to tell me that, right? No. I'm not. What I'm going to tell you is very simple. What I'm going to tell you is you won't have a perfect life, yes, on the earth ever. It's refreshing. Breathe. But if you're not a sucker running like a hamster on a spin wheel forever, maybe there can be a more meaningful and more beautiful and exciting story you can do on earth. You know why people want stuff really in the end? They want to fill the time to live. You know why kids buy Game Boys? You know why we have Thomas trains and where the wild things are? That movie was, I heard it was horrible, by the way. I'm glad I didn't watch it. But my son, my son, my son isn't obsessed with Thomas, Thomas and Friends. He knows every train. I'm annoyed by the trains. I have like 50 Thomases in my house. And we bought him a Thomas puzzle. And this is, illustrates this thing perfectly. We bought him a Thomas puzzle. And this kid, he's a genius. Like he, tried, he said, Daddy, can you help me? I'm like, sure. Where the hell does this go? He's like, poof, 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 you know, putting it all together. I'm just like, wow, that makes a lot of sense. You know, uh, this wouldn't go there. And I'm just like tired, you know. And then uh, when we bought him the where the wild things are puzzle, he doesn't go near ever the Thomas and Trade puzzles. Before he was like, I need Thomas and Trade puzzle in the car while we're eating, in McDonald's, in the train, in, you know, wherever we are, in the park. I need time and train, I'm in Thomas and train puzzles. But then when we get to where the wild things are a puzzle, that's what he, that's, that's heaven for him. Until the next puzzle. I pray that Disney, Pixar, they don't make a film or make another product. Seriously, I'm getting broke, okay? But here it is, the alternative of the gospel, what our life can be, if it can't be perfect, what can it be? It can be very, powerful and meaningful and the suffering and the dissatisfaction can feed into something that's very actually heavenly and that's what jesus talks about next right so let's look at there so but look what jesus says next jesus says he says okay have the right perspective about stuff and then jesus says do not store up for yourselves treasures on the earth but what where moth and rust destroy and weather thieves break in and steal but what store up what Store, store up. So gee, look, look at Jesus' assertion here. It's a statement, and you want to pay attention to the red letters in the Bible. Forget the, everything else. The red letters is what Jesus says. You want to take Jesus' words to the bank. That's a good investment. Jesus says store up, meaning Jesus says you can accumulate treasures. It's not that Jesus is going to give you treasures in heaven. What the hell is gold and diamonds going to be worth in heaven? Nothing. Why? What are you going to buy and sell? Everything's free. Okay? It's, it's basically a theocracy or closest thing to a communism, but no one's corrupt. <laughs> All right? So diamonds and valuables and money and status, whatever, won't matter. So, but Jesus says you can store up treasures. You can store up while you're living. There is an alternative more than running after stuff that will always be ruined or let you down. And this is what Jesus says. Jesus says, and whether thieves... Do not break and steal for, what, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Heart in Greek is a word for passion. 
for time, for where you spend the most time in your life, chasing after. So the question is this, what in life, I mean, come on, you, never, you didn't know how profound this was gonna be, right? This is answering like every question you were asking your whole life. I'm, I'm kidding, that's not gonna happen, ever. But what does not ever depreciate in value? It's not money. American dollar is already depreciating, right? China owns basically the U.S. Treasury. One day they're going to come and say, give me all my money, and then we'll be done. We're going to turn into the Chinese country. Uh, but what does not depreciate in value? It's not material things. What is it? They're memories. You ever go, you ever go through a photo album when you were a kid? I have a photo album of Nathan and me in a beach lying down holding hands. That is priceless, like a MasterCard commercial. That is priceless. That memory, me and Nathan in heaven, if he gets to heaven, well, I'm going to lead him to Christ anyway, so it's not going to matter. So when he gets to heaven, we're going to talk about that memory. Dad, I remember when you were acting like a seal in the beach in San Juan, Puerto Rico. And I think it's even more hilarious now than before. I don't even remember that when I was alive. But here, it's awesome. Memories, you can never, ever, no one can take memories away from you. Well, amnesia, but in heaven, that won't happen. So, but, you know, memories, memorable memories, stories, treasure. So which is, Jesus is saying, store up stories, memorable stories that no one can steal. Because when you get to the life after this one, nothing will matter, nothing will have value except relationship with others, except what you did with others, except how meaningful it was with others. He's, Jesus is saying, live your life, though it can't be perfect because we all know that people are not perfect, except me. <laughs> You're laughing because it's true, right? I mean, no, seriously. People are not perfect. People will hurt you. Your family will hurt you. You're going to have misunderstandings, but you're going to. But it's possible, Jesus says, to store up great and great and amazing amount of stories if you give up on stuff. Because the problem is, the hedge fund manager and the person working is going after stuff because he has to get the big house and the perfect life so he never sees his kid, right? And the story goes on and on. Jesus says, don't run after stuff, run after great stories because those things no one can take from you. No one can. You know, I think about my life and I don't want to boast, but I have a great life. I think I have one of the best life in the world because I gave up stuff. I think for, for, for some of you that are part of the 180 family and you were at the retreat, um, at the retreat, you saw me break down. Wambulance, they said. Father, saw me saw me break down for my staff for for the, you know the eight guys that have surrendered everything they have in their life to um, make this 180 thing a reality they sacrificed everything and you and I think for for some of you you were touched by that me I never want to talk about that conversation after this <laughs> the wambulance story oh do you remember when Pastor Sam did the wambulance story it's not even the touching it's the wambulance story you know, and I cried because, you know, the staff sacrificed so much and it, was, it, it seemed so sad. But, you know, I want, I want to give you perspective about why I was crying and why it didn't stop for a very, very long time. It's because there were tears of joy. They were not tears of sorrow. They were tears of joy. It was joy of the brothers and the entourage that I had in my life about how we live our lives, because we gave up stuff. 
you know? And we live a party every day without that much stuff. I mean, come on, we have like six people living in one room. You know, that's why we're going after this new office building where they get a 1,700 square foot loft, which might seem like heaven until they go in there and they hate each other again. Like, probably a couple days. Like, oh, I love you, man. And then watch, one week later, that's Sam, I want to go back to the small room. People are demanding more space. Don't come into my line or steal my dishes. I mean, what? I mean, come on. I mean, seriously, it's, it's going to happen again. But you see, you know, I, I love my life because I'm, at, you know, I'm up at 4 a.m. sometimes, and we go to the diner because we're hungry, and we're all there eating and talking about some of the stories that we're writing in 180. And, you know, and I think I'm going to share the story. Remember, if you remember, last couple of weeks, we talked about a young man. He's here today. Don't start crying in the story. Now, where his father left him when he was very young, and I invited him to a basketball game. And if you were here, the last conversation he had with his father was on his birthday, where he said, Dad, wish your son a happy birthday. And his said, dad said, who the hell are you? And he hung up on him. Well, this week, right, I've been told the story about him coming into the family of God. He accepted Christ after three months of frustrating conversation with people. And it's the way he came to Christ that I think that we're going to talk about this at heaven. First of all, I want to uh, follow this disclaimer. Never bet someone's salvation on a video game. <laughs> Unless you know you're going to win. If it was heaven, you would win. But on the earth, you might lose. Because don't you think if you're playing a video game for someone's soul, the devil's going to be there? I mean, he might possess somebody. I mean, everything is at stake here. So, first of all, I don't know if it was wise. I think Pastor Joe took the heart of last week's message. Don't, you know, replace smart with heart and let God decide that I come in. And this time, God kind of blessed the video game. And that's kind of ironic because, you know, Sung Yu usually beats him in UFC, the video game. But anyway, can you imagine? I mean, they're in heaven, they're talking, and, and, and Sung Yu's giving me like to Pastor Joe. Pastor Joe, you know, I, I almost didn't make it here. <laughs> yeah. Pastor's just like, oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> but, but you made it, man. And then, you know, I beat you three times. And you see, see the suspense. I bet you all the angels came to, to, that, to that basement. <laughs> all watching. Dumb. You know, watching the cosmic event of what's going to happen to this poor kid's soul. The fate of eternity on a UFC freaking video game. But the matter of fact is, Pastor Joe won three times. And he came to Christ. A fatherless kid found the family of God. But you know, what's better about this story? See, here's the gospel makes everything better. It's the next day. You know, you're happy about events. You know, things you're happy about today, you're, you might not be happy tomorrow, right? I remember leaving the office, and I saw Tong Chur. So Dan, driving us like, he was all sexied up for work. You know, I could see the pets, you know, <laughs> here, and he came out of the car, you know, with his flashy express shirt, and he came out, and, and he had this grin on his face, you know, it's, and it, and you know, it's, it's one of those grins and, and, and joys that, that uh, you, you can't artificially produce in life, it's heavenly. And, and he came out of the car, and like a football player, he's, I mean, he's going to be a pharmacist, they don't really mix, but he came out, he came out of the car with a grin. And he goes, where, where's Hungu? Where's Hungu? Is he here? Is he in there? I'm like, I'm like, why? I got to go wrestle him. He said he wasn't going to come. He was not going to accept Christ. He was not going to come into the family. But now, I got to welcome him into the family. You, and you know I'm not going to cry. Um, I thought, when I was thinking about this, a fatherless and almost brotherless kid got a brother that wanted to wrestle with him. 
And no one, no one, no one forced him. He couldn't wait to get to the office. And you know, I caught that. I, I caught that. He couldn't wait to get to the office because he was so happy that someone came into the family of God. Let me tell you something. That story is going to be told forever and eternity. But that's what the gospel offers. That's what happens when you give up stuff. You get something greater in front. You get you can store up eternal, memorable stories that Jesus invites us to, to love people. You know, okay, I'm like all oh, machine up. Okay, let me get back to myself. Torture, Dan, he sings in our worship team now in, in Staten Island. He's the one that told me, Pastor Sam, you know, it's hard for me to come to Christ. You know, I'm like, why? Because, you know, I want like what everybody wants, you know, a nice car, a jet. <laughs> and, you know, third, I don't give a shit about people. You know, why should I give a shit about people? It's all about me and getting and being a man. And then seeing the gospel transform him into a big brother. It's like he's happy, his hungry is happy. But for me, from that perspective, I saw what the gospel invites us to and invites us to that type of story to live. You can't make that stuff up. That's what the gospel does. That's the gospel. Question, don't you want that? People are like, I know what you're gonna say, don't you want that? And of course your answer is yes. If you get the right perspective on stuff, you can transcend the puff and the stuff. The magic of what the stuff promises you for a better alternative. And what does Jesus say? What is the second lesson, how to transcend materialism? What is it? Begin to what? Appreciate what can't ever, what can't ever depreciate. You need, if you want the best investment to make, the gospel is the only story that gives you that type of story. It says invest into memorable stories that can never be Make full and full, make your life pages and pages of Photoshop and photo booth. Take many pictures as you can, with the craziest things that you can, with not the smartest things as you can, and live life. So that when you get to heaven, you won't be just filled with regret of all the stupid shit you did, like run like a hamster, chasing after stupid things that can never satisfy you. Because what you're going to feel when you get to heaven, that is, if you get to heaven, if, you, if you're not sure, ask me or someone that brought you. They will show you how to get there. When you get to heaven, and when most people get to heaven, what they're going to realize is, damn. So this is what it's like, it's like to be in heaven. I could never get this down there. And you're not going to have memories. All you're gonna talk about is how you didn't step into stories that you could have, how you should have, and you would have, and you could have. You know, in heaven, and this is what heaven and earth have, everybody hates those people. The question I have for you today is what do you want your life to be about? Stuff or memorable memories, beautiful memories that Jesus invites you into. I want that, do you? That's the gospel today. That's how the power of the stuff, the puff in the stuff, loses its power. And Jesus invites you to step into that story today. Will you? Let's all stand and pray together. Will you lift your hands with me? To God as a symbol of surrender and um, you know Jesus is saying in Matthew 6 to all of us today get the right perspective about stuff Give your life to what matters most. <laughs> to memorable memories, beautiful memories. The 
gospel story. <clears throat> Father, I want to pray that we would accept the fact that nothing will ever be perfect in life. And that's granted because Pastor Joe risked someone's salvation through a video game. The story itself is not perfect. And, and honestly, tell you, as we pray today, guys, listen, life is not some stuffer type of lifestyle. The messiness, the rawness, the conflict, the suffering, the dissatisfaction, the disappointment is what makes the story all the better. And what made Tungyu's story even better is no one could write that stuff except God. And no one could be part of that stuff unless we give up our stuff. And you know what? I love my life. Do you? Chasing out their stuff. Let stuff lose power over you today so you can give your life to stuff that really matters. So will you come before the Lord and say, Lord, I want a heavenly perspective today. But how to live my life to something that will never, ever depreciate in value. So Holy Spirit, will you show us today take a deep breath and alleviate the pressure of perfection in people or in products or in things. And the gospel story is simply about you giving us your son. And the closest thing we're going to have to heaven is a relationship with Jesus. And the stories we're going to write about this broken, imperfect, disappointing world. And that's how you redeem the earth through us. Let the text and the story of the gospel question you and ask you a question. What type of life do you want your life to be? A life about stuff that will be ruined and let you down? Or stuff that will appreciate and value because you partake in the stories that you will remember forever? Will you today, as you lift your hands to the Lord or your hearts to the Lord, will you say, God, I want my life to be more than just about stuff. I want my life to be about stuff that I can remember and want to remember. Help me live that life. And that's what the gospel is offering and inviting us to. So, Lord... We want to turn our eyes upon Jesus. As we turn our eyes on you, strangely, the world becomes very dim. And let's make that our last song as we close today. 
as we turn our eyes upon him, I want to pray that this world and the stuff of the world will grow dim and you will begin to join the stories that are memorable in your life. Turn Sing this together with me. your eyes upon Jesus. Look forward to his wonderful Lift your hand for me, let's just the voices. Turn your eyes, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look forward to his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim. time turn, turn your eyes upon Jesus look forward to his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his for the gospel story. We thank you that you have found some way to redeem. Though we are not ever going to have a perfect life and all our questions will never be answered while we live, we live with the satisfaction that Jesus is enough. That what the gospel offers is not an easier life, but a more meaningful life. Not a perfect life, but a memorable life. And Lord, today, we look to you. We pray that the world will grow dim and we will begin to enter the stories you're inviting us to. We thank you for the gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. You can be seated and just give